Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to our speaker training webinar series. I'm Topher Morrison. It is my pleasure to be here with you, and I hope you are as excited to be here as I am because I absolutely love sharing with you guys this content. And I got to tell you, the content I'm going to give you today is awesome. I'm going to save you so much, gosh. You're going to save a lot of money if you listen to what I tell you to do during this webinar. Now, this is all about how to save between 50 to 90% off of the fees that a hotel or a venue will charge you when you want to run an event. There are two types of people who usually will tune in to this type of a webinar. The overly ambitious speaker who hasn't booked their first event yet, you're going to hear what I have to say, you're going to dismiss it all, you're not going to listen to anything, and then you're going to pay out the ass for your venues and you're going to go, holy crap, if I would have only listened to Topher, you'll come back, watch it a second time, and then you'll realize the genius that's inside this webinar. The second group of you are the people who actually do run venues, uh, do run events, and you have to rent venues, and you're aware of how expensive it can be. I mean, the costs are, it's the closest thing I've seen to legalized organized crime. 55 bucks for a gallon of coffee, it's just insane. 500 bucks for a stage, 55 bucks for a flip chart. They will gouge you and gouge you and gouge you on all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to save loads of money on this, all right? So pay attention, get out your pen, get out your paper. Uh, if you've got a dog, throw the ball, shut the door, don't let him back in. If you've got a kid, throw the ball, shut the door, don't let him back in, whatever, I don't know. If you're at the office, Tell all your employees you cannot be disturbed because this is going to save your company a lot of money. All right, so get excited. I'm gonna give you some great info here. And I'm also going to, at the end of this webinar, share with you how you can get one of my best-selling products, um, The Mental Game of Life, Bulletproof Strategies to Crush the Competition, absolutely free. That sells online for like 746 bucks or something like that. Get it for free here today if you stick around, so you want to pay attention, all right? All right, let's jump into this as fast as we can because I don't like wasting a lot of fluff time in the beginning. I just like to get into it, all right? So when booking a venue, there's a few things that you have to realize. First and foremost, you are an easy sale, all right? What do I mean by that? Like if you're watching this video, you're probably a fairly dynamic individual. If you like to get up and lead from the front of the room, you see the glasses, glasses being half full. You're an optimistic person. You like to encourage people to tap into the best of their potential, whatever it is that you're teaching, whether it be finance or relationships or success principles, doesn't matter. My guess is you're a fairly optimistic individual. My guess is also you're an easy sale, meaning you see the value of spending money for programs that will help you to become better. Like the fact that you're watching this right now tells me that you're the kind of person who's willing to invest your time and your money into education that you feel is worthwhile. I have to let you in on a secret. Are you ready? You're weird, okay? I'm weird. We're weird. We are not the norm. So what happens is when you start setting up your first seminars, and those of you who've done it before, you've probably gone down this path before. Being the overly optimistic people we are, we naturally assume that what we have to share is so brilliant, everybody's going to sign up and they're going to be happy to pay the $300, $500, $5,000, whatever it is that we charge. That's certainly how I started my business. Take you back 20 some odd years ago. I don't even know how many are now. Uh, I'll never forget. I was doing my first public event. It was a weekend seminar. It was $995 for a weekend seminar, motivational success principles, that type of a thing. I just moved to Seattle, opened up this personal development franchise. I'm networking like crazy. I'm going out. I'm meeting all sorts of people. I'm handing out my business cards. I'm giving them my brochures. They're all telling me this sounds amazing. I'm like, do you want to go? They say, I'm going to go. I'm like, yeah, they're going to go. Uh, by the time my first event came, I had over 35 people registered for this event at a thousand bucks a piece. Do the math. That's about 35 grand. That's more than I'd ever made in a year, right? And all of a sudden, my life is radically about to change. I went down, I'll never forget this, it was in Renton, Washington. There was a place called the Embassy Suites. I rented this room. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but I, give, I guarantee you I didn't negotiate the price. I didn't question it. I just paid them whatever they asked me for it. And I paid for all three days. Uh, paid for the food. Had a huge, beautiful vegetable and fruit spread laid out at the registration area. So when people came in, they'd feel welcomed. I went out and I bought the top-of-the-line stereo systems. I had the big speakers and back then the VCRs. Eh, a long time ago. Um, and the stereo and the mic kit and everything. Bought it all, right? 
Uh, I was, I mean, I was rolling out the credit cards and just buying stuff on credit because I knew I got 35 grand coming in. What do I care, right? I mean, I'm going to make it all back and then some. And I will never forget this till the day I die. The day the event comes, it's a Friday morning. Registration is somewhere around 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't remember the specifics. And I'm standing by the door ready for my first of the 35 people to show up. And I'm looking down the hall. I'm looking down the other way in the hall. And nobody's showing. 9 o'clock come and goes. 9.15, 9.20. I'm thinking it's okay, it's Seattle. No big deal. Traffic's bad, they'll get here eventually. I keep pacing back and forth, looking down the hall, looking down the hall, nobody's coming. Finally, I realized something. You know what? It's an embassy suites. There's probably more than one embassy suites in the local area. SeaTac Airport, there's probably gotta be a couple. I walk over to the front desk. I let them know, I say, hey, you know what? I've got an event coming up. I'm a little bit worried that in fact, you know what? My, uh, my guests might be going to the wrong embassy suites. Uh, do you have another one in the in general area? I think there's one in Tequila as well. They said, no, this is the only one we got. And that's when I, I start to get a pit in my stomach. And I'm looking around, I'm waiting. 10 o'clock, 10, 15, 10, 30 goes by. Here's the long and the short of it. Are you ready? Nobody showed. Zero people. I went into massive debt buying all this stereo equipment. I bought the cheese and the vegetable spreads, right? I paid for the rooms, right? I bought all the stereo equipment. I don't remember how much I went in debt for that one event, but I'll tell you what, it was heartbreaking. Not, not a single person showed. I couldn't figure it out. 35 people told me they would show up. Not one did. So I learned a very valuable lesson there, by the way, which is people who say they're going to attend without putting any kind of money down, never attend, okay? So uh, here's the, one of the biggest things I've seen people do when they get in the business is they calculate their room based upon how many people say they're gonna go versus how many people have paid. There's a big difference there, all right? And if you are so positive and optimistic and naive to think that everybody that tells you they're gonna go and pay at the door are gonna show up, you need to realize something very quickly in this business. That is one of the biggest lies. It's about as big of a lie as a dolphin smile. We just think they're happy all the time because their face is smiling. Same thing here, right? It's just a big lie because people smile at you and say, I'm gonna go to the event. If you don't have money in hand and it's not paid up front in full, they're probably not gonna show. So you need to realize that. So never book your venues based upon the amount of people who say they're going to come or say they want to come. Only book your venue based upon how many people have paid. All right, so now that's the first thing to get started. Now, the other thing I wanna to say to that is this, and this is before we get into any negotiation principle. I want you to realize something as well. And I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not trying to be negative or bring you down. I'm just trying to tell you like it is so you go in with your eyes open and you know what to expect. Are you ready? Your program. It is not unique. Trust me, I know, I know, I know. You're sitting there thinking, no, 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 mine's unique. I, I help people take their lives to the next level. It's not unique, okay? I don't care what you teach. I don't care what you're talking about. We all like to think that we're unique. I like to think that my program is different than anything out there. It's not unique, okay? And here's the thing. The strategies themselves might be unique, but in the perception of the customer's eyes, it's just like all of the other courses out there that say pretty much the same thing in terms of their implied promise. So because of that, you have to realize something. The competition to get people into your room is harder than it's ever been before. There has never been in this industry a greater level of supply and a lower level of demand. Now that doesn't mean you can't succeed in this business, but it does mean you better go in with your eyes wide open, you better be conservative in your investments, and you better know what you're doing, all right? And so that's what this webinar is gonna hopefully help you do, is have those eyes wide open and make some smart decisions, all right? So let's start with the process for how you book a venue. If I were to ask you right now, what's the first thing that you have to do, or one of the top five things you need to do once you plan a seminar? Almost every single time, from novice all the way up to seasoned seminar veteran, the one thing that I hear in that Tom Five list is always book the venue. And that makes sense on the surface because really, how could you promote an event if you don't know where you're gonna conduct it? How could you tell people where it's gonna be if you don't know where it's gonna be? This makes sense. And I will share with you that in certain types of seminars, that's true. If you're doing an event where people are flying in all over the world to one location, you probably have to book your venue pretty early so they can make their hotel reservations and things like that. I get that, and I'm gonna give you a strategy for how you do that in a moment. But let's go to the best strategy I can give you for getting the best prices available on a venue. Are you ready? 
The hotel or the venue, the conference center, whatever you want to call it, is the last thing you should do for your seminar. Now, I know the last thing you're probably going to do for your seminar is staying up till 3 in the morning assembling the binders or working on the slides. That's what most people do. That should be one of the first things you do. That's a whole different other webinar. But right now, I want you to get in your mind that the last thing you need to book is the venue. And here's why. <sighs> See, here's the thing. As a speaker, can we laugh at ourselves here a little bit? There's no shortage of ego in the speaking business. I mean, let's face it, if you and I think that our dialogue is worth people paying for, well, we got to have a pretty healthy ego. Hopefully it's in control, hopefully it's under check, but we got it. Now, that ego allows us to think, naturally, well, hotels would be happy that I'm calling them to book my venue at their hotel. They love that. And actually, Nothing could be further from the truth. You're what hotels think of as a pain in the ass. See, here's the thing. A hotel, the whole reason why they have venues, conference rooms, is because they want to book hotel rooms. Well, the interesting thing is in most seminars, in most personal development and even business development programs, by and large, most people are pretty thrifty. They spend all the money on the event. They don't have the money for the venue or to, for the hotel. So they try to save money. So what do they do? Uh, they go to all the new apps that help you to find hotels at a cheap rate. If you book like, uh, if you block like 50 rooms at the hotel or 25 rooms at the hotel, thinking that if you get 25 people to come to your event, 25 people will stay there, I got news for you. Nowadays, that's not how it happens because nobody ever calls the hotel anymore to book the venue. They go to Hotwire, Priceline.com, Expedia. They get the new apps like Hotel Tonight and they realize that they can get the prices way cheaper than even you can get them. So you're probably going to have a hard time selling out your block, number one, unless you're doing a huge event where you're including it inside the tuition. That's a different story. But the reality is a hotel really doesn't want to book to you. Who do they want to book to? They want to book to somebody who's they're going to be able to make a lot of money off of, not some budget thrifty speaker who wants to save them a little bit of money on the price per head for the snacks and all that stuff. Here's who they want. Are you ready? They want brides. Yep. They want women who are getting married who are ready to invest in the most special day of their life where money is not an obstacle or an objection. It's not even a concern because what's a concern is to have the best wedding possible. And a hotel can make so much more money on a bride to be than they can on you, a speaker. You're going to come in for a couple of days. They get that but you're probably not going to have a huge banquet where there's a big dance and there's a big dinner where they can charge $35 to $135 or $300 a plate. Uh, you're just going to have an event and maybe you'll have a cocktail party or something. So they realize that if they book that venue to you, so let's say you want to do a weekend event and you want to book it nine months in the future. The reality is the hotel doesn't want to book it to you. They'd rather actually hold out for a bride. So you got to remember supply and demand. If the supply is low and the demand is high, you will pay out the ass. That's how markets work on anything, not just venues, okay? So if there's a big demand and there's a little bit of supply, you'll have to pay dearly for that. That's why De Beers Diamonds only releases a certain amount of diamonds every year to the marketplace. The fact of the matter is diamonds are not a rare rock at all. There's more than enough diamonds to go around on the planet, but De Beers specifically holds back their stockpile and only releases a certain amount every year because they know that if the supply is low, they'll be able to charge more. Hotels are the same way. When you call a hotel nine, 10 months, a year in advance, in their mind, their supply is low and their demand is high. Now, it's a false demand, meaning it's a perceived demand. They know that there's a whole potential of bride-to-bees out there that might want to book that venue. So the way they look at it is if they rent it to you, sure, they might make 10, 15,000, but if they rent it to her, they can get 35, 40,000. So they'd rather not rent it to you. So if they do, but here's the problem. Hotels also realize a bird in the hands worth two in the bush, so they're not going to tell you no. They're just not going to be too thrilled about having to give up one of their weekends to some seminar leader when they wanted to give it up to a bride. So guess what that means you get to do? You get to pay full price for the room. They're going to charge you top dollar because they don't really care if you say no. Because if you say no, chances are a bride-to-be is going to be coming around you know, in another week or two and book that venue. So you need to realize your place or your pecking order with regard to hotels. You're not their number one most desired client. I know that's going to be a crush to some of your egos. It was a crush to mine. We will perceive, we will, we will uh, uh, perceive, no, not that word. What's the word? We will uh, 
persevere. There was the word I was thinking about, right? We'll get by, right? But we just need to realize where we, where we stand in that. Now, here's the thing. The closer you get to a venue date, then what happens is the more likelihood of a bride to be calling to book that venue is very, very low. I mean, let's face it. Brides are not going to wait until two weeks before their wedding to book the hotel. That's just never going to happen. So what you need to realize is that the closer that you get to your date without having a booking, the lower the supply, sorry, the lower the demand will be because there's not going to be as many bride-to-be's wanting to book a venue two weeks out, three weeks out, right? However, if you call them up, like, let me tell you this, you call up a hotel and you want their big, huge conference room and you want it all weekend and it's for next week, you'll be able to get it for a steal. And the reason for that is because they know there's no way in hell somebody's going to be so stupid to call them up and say, hey, can I get your big convention center for one week, for next weekend? It just doesn't happen. Most people book these things out far in advance. So if you understand this dynamic, you can leverage yourself and save a crap ton of cash by just waiting until the last minute. Now, I understand if you're doing a venue where people, like I said, are flying all over, hey, you may not be able to do that. But you'd be surprised how much you can get away with, by the way. I've got my big event called Legacy, where I bring uh, people out all over the world. We spend one week with them, and then I do a one-year mentoring program that, with them to help them become a professional speaker. That event, uh, at the time that I'm filming this, is coming up in October, and it's already uh, August, and I haven't even booked the venue yet. And I've still got people who are coming in for it. And all I'm doing is I send them an email and say, don't worry about the venue. We, it's always in one of these three areas, and we'll let you know about a month before the event. And you know what? As long as I tell them that, they're like, okay, no problem. So you'd be surprised what you can get away with. But I'll give you a strategy for that in a second. Keep this in mind, though. Wait until the last possible minute. The longer you wait, the cheaper the rate. That's your mantra. The longer you wait, the cheaper the rate. Just remember that, and you'll be able to get it for a steal. So... Uh, now, that works great for the one-day events, the weekend events where you're doing local stuff. What do you do, though, if you do have a big event um, where people are traveling up and you need to book it in advance? Well, first off, always remember, the later you wait, the cheaper the rate. So hold off as long as you possibly can. But then when you need to book, I need you to th get a few things uh, like in your head. First and foremost, it's time to take your positive mental attitude, that optimistic nature where you know that everybody would be loving to go to your program, and just take that and set it aside. Now, I don't want you to be pessimistic, but there's a, I think there's a difference, by the way, between pessimism, realism, and optimism. And I think the person who says that uh, there's no difference between pessimism and realism, I think they're a naive optimist. There is a difference, all right? I think we can have a happy balance between here. And just look at the way it is. Just right now, realize you're not unique. You're fighting for dollars with other competitors in your area. And you have to make sure that you plan that ahead. The economy, you got to look at those types of things as well. So keeping all that stuff in mind, realize that it's harder to put butts in the seats than it's ever been because people can get online, they can go to YouTube, all that stuff now. Technology has changed this industry. Keeping that in mind, I want you to set aside your positive, optimistic attitude and be more realistic, shying on the side of pessimistic. So for example, if you have an event where you think you're going to have, say, 500 people, book a venue that can hold 100. Now, before you get all weird on me and go, well, this guy's just being pessimistic. Hang on, I'm going to give you a strategy for how you can get that 500 venue person, like facility, for the price of 100 pound, or 100 person. All right, here's what you do. The best strategy I can share with you is this. Number one, you want to find a hotel that has expandable rooms, and almost all of them do. All right, so find a venue that has a big ballroom that can be sectioned off into pieces. When you make the reservation, what you want to do, if you have to book it in advance, is make the reservation only for one partition with what they call a right of first refusal for the second, third, and the fourth partition. This is a common term in hotels. They're all aware of it. All you have to do is just say, I want to rent this one panel with the right of first refusal for the other four, if there's a five-part panel. There's a lot of benefits to doing this. First off, remember, cash flow is king in business. If you rent all five sections of a big ballroom to hold your 500 people, well, now you have to pay a 50% deposit or a 25% deposit. By the way, Every hotel is going to want to get a 50% deposit. That is negotiable. I never pay more than a 10% deposit. Okay? And you know how I do it? All I do is this. When they t give me the contract, I go, yeah, I'm not comfortable with a 50% deposit, but I'm happy to put down a 10% deposit. And they always say, okay, no problem. They just don't care. And then it's like, you know, 50%, 30 days out, and then 100% before the event. Fine. So never put 100% down. If you have all five sections of that ballroom, you have to pay anywhere from 10 to 50% of, uh, of your venue hire 
right up front. Cash is king. You don't want to give up all that liquid. You might need that for advertising or marketing. So you only pay 10%, hopefully, but you only have to pay 10% on one-fifth of that segment if we're planning a 500-person venue that's in five sections of a ballroom. I'm trying to keep the math as simple as I possibly can here, all right? So you rent only one-fifth. That means you only have to pay a down payment on that one-fifth. And they're going to charge you, by the way, like, like, let's say, I'm just using simple math. Let's say that each section of that ballroom is $200, or 200 pounds, or 200 euros. I don't care. Well, the whole ballroom might only cost you $750. So you're thinking, oh, but I'll get a much better buy if I rent the whole thing as opposed to individual. Because if I do it individually, then I'm going to have to pay $200, 200 200 200 200 200 Then it's going to be 1000 No, because you're forgetting about the notion of supply and demand. Just because you pay 200 for one unit doesn't mean you're going to pay 200 for the next unit. In fact, in most situations, I get those, those extra units, I get them for free. Share with you how to do that here. Stay tuned. Are you ready? Here's how this works. You rent the one section, then you start tracking your sales. Now, uh, this is something we don't have time to go through on this webinar, but obviously if you're a member of my Bulletproof Speaker training or if you're going on to Legacy, we go into all of this in great detail, but there is a pattern of sales cycles that you can track and you can bet that if you've sold, like if, if you sell 15 seats, for example, on the first week of a six week promotion, I can tell you automatically how many seats you're going to sell pretty much within about 10 to 15 seats the whole way out because it's just simple math. So you, you, you track your sales, you start seeing them going up and whatnot. Let's say you've got maybe, I don't know, a, a four month sales cycle for a big event. And at the end of the first month, you've sold 85 seats and you've only got a room that'll hold 100, but you were expecting 500. That's great. Now all you have to do is this process, right? You're gonna call up the hotel, you're gonna speak to your sales manager and ask him this one question. Here's the question you ask him, you say, is the uh, is the um, the unit right next to mine still available? They will say yes. I know they're going to say yes because you have a contract that says you have right of first refusal. So of course they're going to say yes. They say yes, and then you say this one phrase. Are you ready? You go. Really? Huh. Well, business isn't what it used to be, is it? And that's all you say. Okay. You pause, you let them realize, crap, yeah, I'm not hitting my sales quota. And then you say, all right, well, listen, I'm not too sure, uh, but it looks as though I might need a second unit, but I don't know. I just was calling to find out. Thanks, bye, click, hang up, and then wait another week. Track your sales, see how it's going. Another week goes by, you sell another five tickets, 10 tickets, you know you're gonna need more than one venue. Call them back up a second time. You're gonna call that sales, same sales manager. You're gonna say, hey, how you doing? And then uh, they're gonna say, oh, I'm doing fine. What am I gonna do for you? And then you're gonna ask this question. You're gonna say, yeah, I'm just wondering if that second unit is still available next to mine in the ballroom. They're gonna say, yes, it is. You're gonna say, really? Wow. All right, cool. These words are very specific. Are you ready? Here's what you say. You say, okay, well, here's the thing. It looks as though I'm probably gonna need two units instead of one. What would have to happen to just open up that air wall and let me have both units? Notice when I said that, I did not say, how much will it cost? Nowhere in my dialogue did I say, how much do I have to pay? The phrase is, what would have to happen in order for you to let that air wall down and let me just have both units, right? Now, when you phrase it that way, I'm going to say over half, not nine times out of 10, but somewhere between five out of 10 and nine out of 10 times, okay? They're going to give it to you for free. And I'll tell you why they're going to give it to you for free. They're going to give it to you for free because you're their favorite customer. Why are you their favorite customer? Stick around. I'm going to share that little gem for you at the very end of this webinar, all right? But I'm going to tell you right now, they love you more than any other customer. They love it when you call. They can't wait to talk to you. They always feel better every time you call. So because of the fact that you're kind of their new best friend, they're going to let you have it for free. How are you going to become their new best friend? I'll share with you at that at the end. I'm going to tease you with that, okay? It's one of the coolest things that I've developed over these past 24 years in the business. So now, now you got your two units. Well, let's go worst case scenario. What if they say, well, that's going to have to cost you? You say, well, that's fine. What can you do for me? Now, you paid 200 a month ago when the demand was high, the supply was low, but now it's another month, the demand's gone down. They know the odds of getting a wedding in that room next to them are already getting slimmer. You're probably not gonna have to pay the 200. In fact, usually what they'll do is they'll cut the price right in half. 
So they say, well, we can give you the other one for about an extra hundred dollars. And you go, okay, that's great. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Cool. All right. Now, worst, worst case scenario. What if you call them up and they didn't honor their right of first refusal or you were stupid, you forgot to put that in the contract. You call them up and you say, hey, do you still have that second unit available? And they say, no, I'm sorry. We've already rented that out. Not a problem. You simply say, great, well, let me ask you this. Do you have another conference facility uh, in the hotel that can accommodate more than I've rented for? Half the time, the hotels will say, yeah, we can just move you up to the next floor. No big deal. Worst, worst, worst case scenario. You call the hotel. They've already booked it. They don't have anything else available. What do you do? Well, you've already put money down on your deposit. But remember, if you did it like I said, you only put 10% down. Not only that, but you only put 10% down on 20% of what you actually needed. So you're only out a couple hundred bucks. So what you do then is you just simply say, well, oh man, I'm so sorry to say this, but you know what, I've got, I mean, it's good news and bad news. The good news is I'm selling more tickets than uh, I expected, so I'm gonna need a bigger venue. The bad news, I guess, for you is that I'm gonna have to go ahead and just cancel that, um, uh, that contract and let you rent that out to somebody else, uh, and I'm gonna have to go on my way. The contract protects you, by the way, because the contract says that you put the down payment, which is non-refundable if you cancel within a certain amount of time. Now, there's also a good possibility, by the way, that it's still within that time. You might get your deposit back. But the worst, 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 worst case scenario is you just have to walk away leaving your deposit there. No big deal. It was only 10% of 20% of what you needed to run anyway. You're out very little. And now you just go to another hotel. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking... But what if there's not another venue? What if there's not another hotel? Listen, stop and take a breath, okay? Remember this one phrase, are you ready? There's always another venue, always, okay? Yes, there's a, maybe there's an exception. If you live in some little tiny small podunk town that has one street light and one days in hotel and they have one conference room in it, but I don't think that's the audience I'm speaking to right now. That's not the condition of this type of a thing. If you're in a major metropolitan city, I can promise you this. There is always another hotel, with one exception. You have to be smart about what's going on in the economy and in the environment. Uh, you know, at the time that I'm filming this, the Olympics are going on in London. You probably wouldn't want to try to find another venue during the Olympics. That might not happen. But as long as there's not national conventions going on or something where people are coming in all over the world, you're fine. You'll find another venue. Relax. All right, so now you've got your two venues. You get your two pieces, assuming that it's working the way you want it to, right? Uh, now you keep watching your sales, keep tracking those sales, seeing them starting to grow. Well, you're going to repeat the same process over again. All of a sudden you start going, man, I'm past, I'm getting past that 200 mark. I'm going to need to go for 300. I need the third unit. Call up the hotel. Remember your best friend. They love you, right? You call them up and you say, hey, how's it going? I'm just curious, that third unit, I'm wondering, is that still available? They're going to say, yes. You're going to say, really? Wow. Oh. Times are tough. All right, no worries. I was just curious. I don't know. I don't need it right now. I'm just curious. Thanks. Bye. Click. That's it. All right. Wait another week. Watch your sales. Call them back up the next week. You get the idea, right? You say, hey, how's it going? They go, hey, good to hear from you. You go, hey, question for you. Is that third unit still available? By the way, now we're getting really close to the event. Now you're outside of a month, maybe. Okay. Probably uh, two months at the most. So they know that there's no possible way anybody's gonna rent that much space at this point in time. It's a, it's a done deal. The potential for weddings, they're gone. Now they're getting desperate. They know they're not gonna fill it. Got it? So you call them up, you say, is that room still available? And they go, yeah, it is. And you go, really? Wow, all right, cool. Well, hey, listen, here's the thing. It's looking like at this point in time, I'm probably gonna need that third unit. I think I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna need it all, but I know you can't give me half of the, the unit. So you know, what would have to happen for you to just knock out that air wall and let me have the three units? Once again, I didn't say how much you're gonna charge me, what's the cost, nothing like that. What's gonna have to happen to you to knock down that air wall and let me just use all three units? At this point in time, if they didn't let you get the second one for free, they're probably gonna give you the third one for free. But if they try to charge you at that point in time, say, Really? You're going to charge me? Come on. Help me out. You know, you're probably not going to rent it anyway. I mean, it's not going to be, hell, the door is probably, that probably costs more in labor to put up the air wall than just leave it down anyway. And you can probably talk them into giving it to you for free. Worst case scenario, they don't give it to you free. They're going to charge you, but they can't charge you what they charged you for the other one three months ago. They can't charge you what they charged you for that one. So they're going to probably knock it down or they'll charge you the same price as the second unit, maybe another hundred bucks or something like that. But the point is you're going to get it for at least half off, if not more. 
And the cool thing is, by the way, uh, and uh, by the way, maybe now you're getting close, so you have to give them a little bit more, for, more money for the deposit. That's cool, I get that, right? And you keep on the process. And by the way, you just do this again. You watch your sales. If it goes up to four, you call them up, hey, do you have that fourth unit available? Yes, I do. Really? Okay, well, I'm not sure I need it. Bye, click. Same thing, you just do this over and over and you build. Only pay for what you know you're going to use. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen promoters with the best ambitions book these huge venues. In fact, if you don't believe me, you can read in the ebook. I've got that story about the guy that promoted uh, an event out in London and I showed up. He had 800 seats set up, 30 some odd people in the room, right? I guarantee you right now, if he's watching this video, he's sitting there going, I wish I would have listened to him that many years ago. Trust me, this is the best way. You don't want to pay for things that you don't need. It's just stupid, right? All right, now, you get your venues up. at the pile. Let's say, for example, the whole thing was normal $750. you are going to rent the first one for $200, the second one for $100, the third one for $100. By that way, there's no way. Now you're like two weeks out or a week out. They're not going to charge you for any of the other ones. You can get a room, which would be $1,000 individually, $750 with a group. You can get it for about $400. Bucks. Okay? It's that easy. It's simple. It doesn't take a lot of rocket science to do this, right? It's just, it's fairly simple, okay? Now, a couple of other things, little secondary strategies to help you out here, all right? Now you've got all the uh, extemporaneous costs. You've got the flip charts, you've got the stages, you've got all that stuff. A couple of things to keep in mind. First and foremost, let's talk about flip charts, okay? Don't rent them. If the hotel doesn't throw them in for free and they start charging you, trust me, you can just walk down to your local office depot or Staples and buy a flip chart and just use it and then be done with it. And if you don't even wanna take it, here's something fun you can do, by the way. You've got all your notes written on the flip chart. This is always a fun thing to do. You're not gonna use the flip chart. Let's say you flew in, you're not gonna take the whole thing home with you. You can have a fun raffle in the audience to see who gets to win all of your notes from the seminar. People love that kind of stuff. They're like, I gotta take the flip chart home with all the charts. They're like, yeah, we're gonna do a raffle. They think that you're the hero. They think you're being nice and generous. You're giving them a flip chart. <laughs> they get the whole thing. They can take the easel home with them. It's great. They'll, they're gonna love it, right? Nope, didn't cost you anything because you already had to buy it anyway and you weren't gonna, you were just gonna throw it away. If, if this is a hotel that you plan on doing multiple things with, give it to the hotel. Say, listen, I wanna give you guys a gift. Here's your flip chart. I don't need it, I'm not gonna take it home. But I want you to remember that the next time I come back and not charge me for a flip chart. And they'll go, okay, no problem. Now you've given them some reciprocity, they, they, have, they owe you reciprocity, they're gonna get you to get it the next time for free. All right, so keep this in mind, how can you leverage that stuff? Let's talk about coffee, refreshments, donuts, all that stuff, all right? That is probably one of the biggest expenses in a hotel. It's ridiculous what they can charge for coffee, for sodas, for snacks, crackers. I mean, they will walk down to the local grocery store and pay $2.68 for a six pack of granola bars and then charge you $6 per granola bar. And somehow this is legal. It's crazy, but they will do it. So how can you get those at a discounted rate, sometimes even free? One of my favorite stories, there's a local hotel here in Tampa. I went in, I rented, the, the room was 750 bucks, by the way, I paid 100 bucks for it, because I rented it, uh, I think, like three days before the event. So I got it for 100 bucks. And then I went there, and I got the projector, which would normally be 450 bucks to rent for the day. I got that for free. I got the flip chart for free. I got the coffee, tea, donuts, and soda pop, all that for free. How did I do that? Well, here's what you do. Gotta also understand a little bit about how hotels think about speakers. Unfortunately, and this is a sad thing, most speakers, when they come into a hotel, they got their diva dress on and they think they're all powerful and I'm a speaker so I'm so important and I'm just gonna boss everybody around. And I'll tell you right now, first off, hotels never get the layout of the room right and that usually pisses off most speakers. It used to piss me off too. I think I've mellowed in my old age. I'm growing up and I just don't care about that stuff anymore. But I used to get all pissy. You know, I'd walk in and go, this is not what the layout had to say. I sent you guys a, a chart and it had every seat where I wanted. This is not I wanted. I'd start bossing people around. I realized I'd never do anything for the morale of the employees. And it kind of made me look like a bit of a douchebag. So what I finally do now is this. I'm just more mellow about it. I walk in and the first thing I do, there's two strategies. Number one, if it's a small event where there's only one guy who's in charge of banquets, he's setting up the whole room, like uh, case of the point, the one that I used here in Tampa where I got everything for free, I walk into the room, it's set up wrong, despite the fact that I gave him a drawing of exactly how I wanted it. 
So I looked at the guy and I said, I go, is this how they told you to set the room up? And he goes, yeah. Oh, first off, I introduced myself, shake my hand, treat him like a human being, by the way. You'd think that would be a natural assumption, but some of you need to hear that as well. So I know the guy's name. I've met him. I said, is this how they told you to set the room up? And he goes, yeah. And I go, did they give you the seating chart, the thing that I sent? And, I, and he says, no. And I go, don't you hate it when they do that? And he goes, I do. And this is what I said. I look at him. I go, well, listen. I go, this isn't at all how we actually wanted it set up. I go, but it's good enough. He's like, no, 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 let me fix it. Where I go, nah, dude, you got more things to do than worry about some diva attitude from me coming in. So I just, that's good enough. We'll make it work. It's no big deal. And by the way, we could make it work. It's no big deal. You know, it's, it's like, uh, I'll never forget this. I, I'll tell you what shifted my attitude about this whole thing. I was doing an event in Manchester, England. I'm setting up for a mental game of life seminar. And I've got, uh, you know, volunteer crew helping me out, setting up the room. And there's this one guy named Glenn. Still a good guy, a good friend to this day. Well, he's always been a good guy. Still a good friend to this day. Um, and Glenn was helping me out set up the room. And I, I was like so picky back then. I'm meticulous, right? And I'm <laughs> taking these, these huge flower pots that have these trees sticking out of them, right? And I'm, 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 I'm setting them up at the stage. First time, I drag them all the way up to the front so they look pretty. And I'm sitting there and I'm turning them around, trying to get the palm fronds to look right and how it'll visually look, right? And I look over at Glenn. I go, Glenn, I go, I go. I'm gonna just rotate this flower pot and just tell me when the palm fronds look best. And, uh, and I start turning it like this, thinking he'd do it right, and I'm turning it like this. So I go, just say when, just say when. And I look at him, I go, are you looking? And he, and he looks over at me and he goes, for Pete's sake, Topher, you're trying to sell some product, not win an award on decorating. And like, as soon as he said that, that was like, it was like such a shift for me. I was like, holy crap, I have totally lost the plot if I care about which way the stupid palm fronds are facing, right? And ever since then, I'm just like, look, I asked myself, is this going to affect my sales? If it doesn't, then I don't need it changed. So it was really cool. The guy said, look, we don't have to change it. It's no big deal. Look, you got other things to do. I go, in fact, and I reach into my pocket and I give the guy a $20 bill. I go, in fact, here, this is for you having to put up with me because I'm sure I'm going to be weird by the end of the day. Speakers always are, aren't they? And he just looks at me and he starts laughing because he's had to deal with all these egos of speakers before. So he immediately thinks I'm unlike most speakers. I just gave him 20 bucks. Now, this guy probably makes a minimum wage. So I probably just gave him about, in America, three, three hours worth of work, right? And all of a sudden, he's damn grateful and he's loving me, right? Now, I know that if anything goes wrong, and let's face it, things always do at seminars, when I go to him, I'm his friend now. I've just given him 20 bucks. I just paid for his lunch for the next two days, three days, maybe four days, depends where he eats, right? So he's loving me. So there was a thing with the projector screen. It was, I didn't want a drop down screen. I wanted a portable one. I asked him, he said he didn't have that. I said, no problem. We'll just use the drop down screen. No big deal. And then I said, but, uh, but the drop down screen was behind me. And I didn't want that because if I have the projector there, then it lights me up. But they had one up in the ceiling, which was the $450 projector. I said, listen, I go, I don't mind. We could use it. That's fine. I go, but if I'm using this projecting screen, I go, what, what would have to happen for you to just lower that thing down? He goes, not a problem. Got the projector for free. I go, dude, really? He goes, yeah. I go, man, you are my hero. I shake his hand. I go, seriously, dude, you are making this day awesome. And I'm not, I'm not like trying to, to like to kiss his ass, uh, you know, to get stuff. I genuinely am grateful for him helping me out. He just gave me a projector for 450 bucks, wiped it off the pill. He's just made my day a lot better. I would have hated that whole day if I would have had to have a projector right there and then talk off to the side um, while not being in the way that I can't stand that. By the way, if you put screens in the middle, you need to watch my videos in Bulletproof Speaker Training because you should never have the projector behind you, uh, the screen behind you. Anyway, I think I've derailed a little bit here. So uh, I was very grateful for that. My compliments are sincere. This is building up his self-esteem. He's getting appreciated, which is something that rarely happens in that industry. And now anytime I need something, he's right there to help me. Not only did he help me with everything that I needed, he also felt so bad because of the screen debacle and all that. He actually ended up being, and then he goes, can I get you anything to drink? Do you guys want some coffees or teas? I said, well, yeah, when you, when, when you say coffee and tea, what do you mean? He goes, on the house? I said, yeah, sure, anything you got, man, we'd be so grateful. You're a rock star. And he's like, yeah, thanks, you know, and he felt great. Listen, all those staff, they're empowered to be able to do that anyway. You just got to give them a reason to like you to do it. Speaking of that, I told you at the end here, I would share with you one of the coolest things. Now, I'm going to share with you something. This is the point in time where most speakers that have 
their secondary game, which is to initiate you into something they want to sell, which I have as well. Duh, you're not stupid. You know that. I want to talk to you about my Bulletproof Speaker Training Membership. This is the part where most people would say, all right, now I'm about ready to share with you that one key to get the sales manager of the hotel to think you're their best friend. But before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about my products. I'm not going to play that game with you. And I hope you appreciate that and give me the respect of sticking around and listening to the all end of the thing and listen to the opportunity they have for you because it really is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to be able to have access to my knowledge 24 hours a day, seven days a week, be able to email me directly and I'll respond within about three to four hour time frames is usually my standard. And we can create an ongoing relationship where I can really help you with your speaking profession. Before I do that, let me give you that little gem that I told you about at the end. How do you get the sales manager to like you? Here's what you do. Once you've called up the hotel, you found out what the rates are for the big venues, you negotiate them down to the small venue, you, uh, you, know, you fill out the contracts, you agree to do a 10% down versus a 50 Once you do all that stuff, right? When you return the contract, the next day, immediately get it in the mail, you want to send them a, a thank you card, like a Hallmark greeting card, thank you card, handwritten with a gift certificate in it to a local restaurant. I usually do Fleming Steakhouse or Ruth Chris Steakhouse or something like that for anywhere from like 50 to $100 or 50 to 100 pounds or euros, whatever, whatever's fair, whatever you think is appropriate. Doesn't matter, by the way. The reality is that sales manager or that sales rep that's booking the venues, the percentages that they get from the venue sales is so insignificant. A $100 tip from you to say thank you for being cool with me usually is higher than their commissions because they're mainly a salary plus bonus type of a thing. And even if it's not as much, they're still so grateful for you giving them this $100 coupon or gift certificate. That nobody's ever done that for them, by the way. And you should be grateful and you shouldn't be cheap because you are gonna negotiate a, a room that would normally be a thousand pounds. You're gonna get it for about 450 or 500. So come from abundance, dust off your wallet, Give them a gift card for a restaurant for 100 bucks or 50 bucks, whatever is appropriate, but nothing less than 50 for crying out loud, at least 50. Uh, and just let them know that you really appreciate their flexibility and you appreciate them working with you. They're going to love you. They're going to think you're the coolest person because nobody ever sends them gift cards. Right? Just send them up to them. Thank you card. They're going to love you. All right, there you go. Okay, now, at this point in time in the webinar, usually this is where you probably have loads of questions. If you have any questions whatsoever, I do want to remind you, if you've got a place to enter in your questions right there somewhere down here, I'm not exactly sure, in this general vicinity, there's a place for you to just simply uh, enter in your email and what question you have. You might want to stick a phone number on there as well, by the way, then I can just call you back if I got the time. If not, I'll respond back via email. I'm very accessible. I'm very approachable. I don't bite ask me any questions you got. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, if I do make a phone call and I answer the question because it's that detailed, uh, as a courtesy, I'd like you to also be willing to maybe look into the option of taking your training a little bit further because the fact of the matter is, if you have questions for me now, maybe it's time for you to look into getting a deeper level of training. So I'd like to share with you real quickly how you can do that and how you can also get one of my best-selling products, The Mental Game of Life, Bulletproof Strategies to Crush the Competition, which sells in DVD format for over 700 bucks, absolutely free, right here, right now. So what I'd like to share with you right now is an opportunity for you to take that question that you might have or the one that you didn't even type in there and ask it, as many times as you like, come up with as many questions you have, and hang out with me for an entire year. If you feel like you've got some value out of this webinar, then hopefully I'm the kind of person that you'd like to get more advice from. And if that's the case, well, I have a program called Legacy. Now, I'm not really trying to sell Legacy here today, but I do want to at least mention it for you. Legacy is by far and away the end-all, be-all, ultimate speaker training program out there, even if you've already been trained by other people as professional speaking, but you've kind of been left wondering well, how the hell do you get your business up and running? This is the program because we not only focus on platform skills, but we also focus on the key aspects which make you a great professional speaker of tomorrow, which in my opinion, there's really five main skills. There's professional speaking to a live audience, like platform skills to a live audience. There's platform skills to a virtual audience, like I'm doing right now. How do you connect with people on a camera? There are uh, interviewing skills when you've got a guest and you're trying to find some kind of a JV opportunity where you're interviewing an expert in their field. There's interviewing skills when you're the guest and you're being interviewed. How do you make a powerful interview to where you can get booked on network television for that matter? 
Uh, and then the fifth thing, oddly enough, is how do you read a teleprompter? to where it looks natural and normal and organic like you're having a conversation, not like you're tracking the lines and reading something. So those are the five key areas that we talk about in Legacy. Plus, it's a one-year mentoring program where we address all of the other business aspects. Plus, we customize for you a one-year business plan. We create product for you. There's so much that really I can't even talk about it right now because that's not my point. That's not my purpose of actually talking about it, but I want to expose you to it. You can check it out at LegacyCertification.com. But the problem with legacy that most people get faced with is that there's a $20,000 price tag to it. And so a lot of people don't feel that they have the $20,000 to invest in a training program that, even though they like to, they want to, but they just can't seem to uh, find the resources. And in my opinion, if you can't find the resources for it, then you probably don't take, have what it takes to go through the program anyway. But we do have an alternate solution for you that I think is really a great program, uh, and it's much more effective, especially if you're cost conscious and you're looking for that, because the, the, you know, the, the challenge, like I said, is that people can't afford legacy. Well, here's the solution. The solution is the Bulletproof Speaker Training Program. This is a membership site designed specifically for professional speakers. Uh, and it's a membership designed specifically by professional speakers, which is really cool as well. So it has all of the things that really, as a professional speaker, if I could get trained, this is the stuff that I'd want to get. And it's all done virtually online. It's a monthly membership. Uh, here's the best way to look at it. Listen, if you've liked what you've heard today, and you're the kind of person who sits there and goes, you know, I'd like to take Topher out for dinner, maybe once a month, pick his brain on what it takes to succeed in the business of professional speaking, well then Bulletproof Speaking is for you because it's about the same price. And by the way, I'm a cheap date. I'm not even a Ruth Chris Steakhouse kind of guy. I'm just like an Outback Steakhouse kind of guy. So for $47 a month, you can literally have better access to me than you would at dinner because if you took me to dinner, I'd just be focusing on the steak and the sweet potatoes. Here, you got my undivided attention. I'm the only person who manages the entire Bulletproof Speaker Training uh, program. I log on to that thing about three to four times a day. I usually can answer your questions within about an hour to two hours, but no more than usually 24 hours go by before I even log into it. Hell, I even do it on the weekends because I love the program so much. So it's a great way to get instant access to me to ask me any questions you want, Plus, for the 47 bucks, you get so much. Uh, we've got main content. Uh, I think we got like five main pieces of content. The first one is what we call speaker secrets. Remember that speaking ebook that I told you about earlier in the webinar, which is free, by the way? Uh, that ebook, there's actually two versions there's a free version and there's a paid version. What's the difference? Well, the free version that you can get at bulletproofspeaking.com, it's free. And inside it, they have a lot of great little tools like the speaker's contract, and I've got some management tools for seminars and all that stuff. All of those things are for sale at a very low price. I think the contract, by the way, is free. But everything else, hell, you know, anything from $4.95 upwards of $47. If you were to buy everything inside the free ebook, you'd be spending about $147, maybe about $150, $160. Bucks. I'm not exactly sure the exact price. But for $47 a month, you could get the entire ebook for the span of the three months, and all of that stuff is free inside the speaker ebook, the paid version. So it pretty much saves you money if you just sign up for about three or four months and get those free products. You can get them all. So they're all free inside there. Now, that doesn't mean that every single product inside the ebook is free, because I also endorse other programs and stuff that I have no ability to charge. But all the speaker related products, which we charge for in there, they're free inside the paid version uh, at Bulletproof Speaking uh, for the membership site. The next thing that we have, if you're already a speaker and you book venues, you're going to love this. Because if you do book venues, you realize right now, never book a venue sight unseen. You have to do an on-site inspection. Well, I've, for over almost 500 hotels now worldwide, I've gone through and I've taken the venue review or the tour for you of the whole venue. And I've done this in all sorts of countries. I've done it in Australia. I've done it in Canada. I've done it in the US. I've done it in the UK. I've done it in Singapore. I've done it in Indonesia, uh, all over the world. Uh, and I, I have a weird life. I just, whenever I go into a new country or a new city, I run around and tour all of the hotels with my video camera. And I take literally a virtual tour of every hotel that I can get my hands on. So I can't guarantee I've done every hotel, but I can tell you I've done a lot of them, especially if you're in London, man, I've smothered that whole place. Now, having said that, if you're in a city that I haven't reviewed yet, 
As a part of the Bulletproof Speaker Training Program, you can simply call me up or send me an email and say, what do you think of this hotel? And even though I haven't been there in person, I'll be able to give you a pretty good judgment on whether or not it's a good hotel based upon their websites, based upon a conversation I can have at their hotel. I'll do the legwork for you. So it's kind of a cool little feature as well. So if you book hotels, you're gonna love venue review. Uh, the second, or the third thing that we have is a thing called Bulletproof Mentoring. Bulletproof Mentoring was actually a program that we created at the advice of some of our members, where each month you can submit a request to get mentored by me for one full hour. Now I charge my mentoring out, my mentoring sessions go by the way for 300 bucks an hour when I can just do it at the office. So this is a great opportunity for you to get a $300 mentoring session, absolutely free. Just fill out the little thing, click on why you want to get mentored, and then I'll mentor you. And then what we do is we rebroadcast that for everybody else to watch and get the benefit from as well. And so you can not only get yourself mentored, but you can watch all of the other sessions as well. Each month we have a new client. Another section we have, which I really feel is the heart, the meat of the program, is what we call the Bulletproof Videos. You've already seen two of these videos here today in How to Negotiate with Promoters. But every single week you get a video like that. And that video is focused either on business strategies or it's focused on uh, gizmos and gadgets, like what is the software and the hardware that you need in order to have a great business. Uh, we also cover things like health and fitness. You know, I gotta tell you, I've been a professional speaker for over 24 years. I've been traveling all over the world. And you know what, I'm still pretty healthy. I gotta say, you know, at 43 years old, I'm feeling pretty fit, I haven't got fat. I think I've got some pretty good right to talk about how to stay healthy when you're living on the road. What restaurants to eat at, what exercises to do, all sorts of it from the mental and a physical side as well. Uh, we also cover things like platform skills, obviously, which is one of the more important ones. But these platform skills are not the typical platform skills that you're gonna get at a speaker training which talks about how to get people to raise their hand and jump up and down and do all those mind manipulation techniques that so many speakers are doing right now which I find are deplorable. This is a way to take your level of speaking to a whole new level of sophistication and become a professional speaker that other professional speakers would want to endorse and recommend. Now, why would that be important? Well, join Bulletproof Speaker Training, I'll share with you because that's one of the best strategies for getting booked, okay? Uh, and then let's see here, what else do we have? Oh yeah, we've got the legacy mentoring as well. So for those clients who do go to my legacy seminar, and pay $20,000 to go to the program, we do uh, bi-weekly mentoring sessions with them. And what we've done is we've taken 12 of the most like powerful mentoring sessions we've ever had, and we post them inside Bulletproof as well. So each month, for the first 12 months, you'll be able to not participate into the mentoring sessions, but kind of be a fly on the wall and listen into their conversations, which is really cool. I mean, that's, you can't even put a price tag on that. Well, actually you could, 20 grand, <laughs> and you get it all included inside the program. Uh, now, of course, we also have a bonus section. Uh, the bonus section I'm not going to talk about because you shouldn't sign up for what's in the bonus section because they're bonuses. But I will tell you that we have a lot of cool surprises for you in there. Uh, believe me when I tell you, at $47 a month, you're going to be getting a minimum of $470 worth of value every single month inside this membership program. Now, here's where it gets really cool. For those of you who've paid attention to this webinar and you've stuck around, I wanna reward you and thank you for that as well. So one of the things that I do in all of my webinars, this isn't unique to this one, but I want you to know it is special. And that's for anybody who sticks around and listens to the entire webinar, you have a unique opportunity. You don't have to sign up for $47 a month. I'm gonna let you do it for a trial offer for the first month. Now, don't get excited, by the way. I'm not gonna give it to you for free. I'm not gonna give it to you for a dollar, but I am gonna give it to you what I think is a pretty fair rate. That's $5 for the first month to try it out. That first month gives you full access, just like if you were paying $47 your first month, so it doesn't restrict you. And you're gonna get a good idea. You're gonna get four of the videos, uh, one a week. You're gonna get the venue review. You're gonna have instant access to all of that. You'll get the first four chapters inside the ebook. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of content in that first month for only five bucks, and if that's not enough, I also have included as a special bonus for anybody who signs up during this webinar, access to my entire DVD collection called The Mental Game of Life, Bulletproof Strategies to Crush the Competition. Listen, I sell this DVD program for over $700 on my website. We've uploaded all of these videos to the online membership portal, and you can watch them all for only five bucks. That's a pretty good deal. So even if you don't want to be a professional speaker, which I would question why you've been watching this whole thing, so I'm sure that you are, but uh, even if you just wanted to watch it for those videos, it's a great deal. Try it out for five bucks. If you like it, 
You can stay a member and it'll just auto recharge on your credit card at $47 a month thereafter. You can cancel at any time. There is no obligation. You don't have to make a long-term commitment here. You can try it out for five bucks. You go again next month if you like it, keep going. In fact, every month, essentially, you can just try it out. And at some point in time, if you find you don't like to do it anymore, you can just simply cancel. No harm, no foul. So there's my offer for you. I really hope you take advantage of this. Listen, if you are serious about becoming a speaker, you need this content because you can't get it anywhere else. It's original. It's unique. Um, and you know what the fact is? Nowadays, more than ever, competition's tough. There has never been a greater level of supply and a lower level of demand for speakers. So what that means is that if you really want to succeed as a professional speaker, you have to do everything you can to distinguish yourself and make yourself stand out. One of the ways to do that is to become a member of Bulletproof Speaker Training. Here's another cool thing about the program, by the way. The cool thing about Bulletproof Speaker Training is that it's subscribed, it's a subscription basis, but unlike a lot of subscriptions where if you don't read it or watch it, it expires, man, that's not how this works. This encourages you to stay a member for as long as you can because even if you don't watch the videos and you just let a couple of months go by, it's no big deal. When you finally log on, all of the content that's been accruing for you is still waiting for you there. So you'll never have to worry about the whole use it or lose it policy, we don't do that. As long as you're a member of Bulletproof Speaker Training, you have access retroactively to everything that you have an entitlement to. So that's pretty cool as well. Listen, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to this webinar. I hope you got a lot of value. Once again, if you got questions, enter those questions into place. Send me an email. Feel free to give me a call. If you ever got any questions, I'm a phone call or an email away. It's been my pleasure. Thanks so much. Make sure you go check out the other webinars as well. We got a lot of them. Uh, we're always trying to come up with new ideas. If you got an idea for a webinar, put that in there as well. And who knows, maybe in the next month or so, you'll see that as a webinar as well. Until then, please take care, dare to dream, and make each day an epic adventure. Bye for now.